All right, everybody, welcome back. So we're going to go ahead and continue on with our mounting plate for our Fireball Tool fixture plate. And what we're going to do is go ahead and get our four uh, holes drilled in there and counterboard for the socket head bolt. And then we'll flip it over and get the two holes drilled and reamed for the, for the pins. So I'm going to put me a couple little witness marks on here just to see. So our plate is seven and a half inches and we're on a six inch center. So that gives us inch and or I'm sorry, inch and a half. So we got about three quarters from the corners that we're going to be going, you know, each direction to put it on center. So let's see, we'll just put us a little mark here. It's not going to be anything 100% accurate, but that's why I like my hook scales. You can hook the edge and make a little mark. Just like that. All right, so somewhere right about there is where our holes will be. And then we come in here and so that looks like right on six inches, okay? Six inches and then we'll measure it this way, six inches. All right, so we'll, uh, we'll find the center of the plate and then work off our center line just like before. I'm going to be using my edge finder to find the, the center of this plate and I'm going to go over this again for the guys that might be new or still trying to understand this. So this is a half inch diameter edge finder and it just, a lot of people call it a wiggler and it's spring loaded inside there. There's a spring to hold the two pieces together. And the way this works, whenever you actually, you turn it on so that it's spinning, when you come up to the edge and you slightly work the table over, once you find the very center of that, this thing is going to kick over to the side, and that tells you that you're on the edge, okay? Now, what you want to do to line up with the edge there, if you're just using your dials, since this is a half inch, is that you just take half of that diameter, which is .250, so you zero out your dial down here on the end, and you move the table over, 250, and that'll put you on the edge right there, okay? We're going to be using the digital readout. I'm going to be using the half command up there. So we're going to do it that way, and I'll show you how that works. So let's go ahead and move off, and I'm going to push over to the side. We're going to turn the spindle on, and just move your table over. And I, I did it too fast right there, so I was probably off a little bit. Once it gets real close, the small movements. All right, see, it just kicked over, so now we're on the edge. We're going to pick it up, and then let's come up here to the DRO. So we're going off the Y axis, which is the top one right here, so we need to zero it out. Hit that to zero. All right, now we're going to go to the other side. Let's make sure it's kicked off. doesn't really matter how much you're touching of this thing, because it's a ground, uh, true cylindrical surface. I usually just go around half of it or so, but it doesn't really matter. All right, so let's move it over. Slow down once you get close and just barely creep it over there. All right, it just kicked off. You might not see it, but it's kicked off that way toward the, toward the back, all right? So this is our total dimension across this plate. So that's gonna be this, whatever size I cut it to, plus the half inch of the edge finder. So we're right there. It's showing three thousandths under, which is probably right on because I didn't, uh, I didn't actually finish that in the shaper exactly uh, seven point five. I think it was a couple thou under that. So anyway, what you want to do now is hit this button right here. It says half. All right, we're going to hit half, and it says half select axis, and you want to select this axis right here, and you hit that one. All right, so that's split it. Now we're off center that exact mount. So if you want to go to the middle, you just take it to zero, or we're going to be going off a three inch center to center hole pattern. So all I'm going to do is just move it over to exactly three inches and I'm going to lock the table there. And now we're already set for that side, the left side of the plate. So we're going to repeat that same exact process for the Y axis right here.
Okay, there's our first hole. I'll start with this spot drill. Get it spotted in. I'm going to drill it for a half inch. So I'll get them all drilled and then we'll come back with our counterbore and we'll have that set to a proper depth and then we'll do all four counterbores. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get our counterbores done now. So I've got this mounted in a half inch collet and running nice and true as you can see right there. So here's the other reason why I don't over I don't drill these holes oversized to begin with. If you need to oversize them, do it after you do this this uh, procedure right here. These things are designed to pilot on the hole that you drilled. So this area right here that's ground is is ground half inch, and that hole is to pilot that and keep that thing from walking off like that. All right. Now you'll probably have a few thou clearance in there, especially with a drilled hole, but it's going to allow you to give to pilot the hole just like it's designed to do okay so that's that now the other thing I'm going to do is show you how I like to do counter bores and this is a pretty simple method if you don't have any kind of DRO also if you want now the way that I like to do these is I like to be able to crank this tool down all the way to a hard stop every time okay I don't want to crank up on the knee and I don't want to necessarily read this digital readout right up here in front of me. We're going to have it set to a zero, but I've got it going down all the way at the bottom of the quill travel onto the stop. So I'm going to show you what I do here, okay? We're going to bring it all the way down. I'm going to lock the quill, and then we're going to touch the tool off. Showing you what I'm talking about here. So we got the, the quill going all the way down on the, the, the machine stop right there. All the way down, and it's repeating within a thousandth every time, okay? That's no big deal. So we're gonna bring it all the way down and I'm gonna lock the quill. Now, let's raise the knee up and touch the tool off right there. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and turn it on. Now, I'm running at 135 RPM. You generally wanna run these things a lot slower than, than what you normally would. Maybe run them at like a reamer speed uh, because you don't wanna burn those things up. They're expensive, they're harder to replace than a drill or an end mill. So just be conservative with these and use plenty of cutting oil or cutting fluid uh, to help lubricate it and prevent any kind of chip welding in there. All right, we're going to go ahead and run this table up, run the knee up. And this isn't a super critical dimension. We just want to make sure that the head of the bolt is under the surface. All right, there's our touch off right there. So we can go ahead and back off now. So we'll set our knee to zero. And I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna come up 515 thousandths. I wanna give it a little bit of clearance so that just in case that it is close to the top surface there. So it's one, two, three, four, five. And then we're gonna go a little extra there. 15, let's go 16, that'd be 164th. All right. Make sure you got your cutting oil there. So what we've done is we moved the table up exactly a half inch. And I'm gonna come down here, I'm just gonna to touch it. And I'm looking at this DRO. All right, it says 512 up here on the DRO. So we're gonna be good. And what we wanna do is just come down Take your time, don't feed it too hard, but you want to get a good solid chip coming out of there. Don't let the tool rub any. Keep it oiled, keep it wet. The way that this tool is ground is that it will make a flat seat there for the head of the bolt to sit on unlike an end mill. We're almost there. All right, 
it. There's our bottom right there. And there is our counterboard hole. Now we can take this bolt and you can flip it over and you can see right there that once that thing's down in there that it will clear the top of the plate there. And I don't know if our threads will clear, but it will. See that? Well, I can't go down any further because it's hitting the vise there, but you can see that we still got plenty of clearance for that bolt to go down in there without having to drill it oversize. And since we drilled all of these on an exact hole pattern, I know that all these bolts will line up and you don't have to worry about it being off. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do all four holes and then we're gonna come back with a chamfering tool and put a nice little clean chamfer on that edge. So I got a countersink tool in there. We're just going to use that to chamfer the corner. I'm going to use the same technique. So I've got the quill all the way down on the hard stop, okay? And what we'll do, I'm just going to run it up until it cuts the first one where I want it. Like that right there. All right, so you can come down. It's got a nice chamfer. It's perfect. It's all it needs. So now we've got a stop set for all the other ones. I don't have to worry about how deep it is or we're trying to match it. That's it. Just come down and cut it and move off to the next hole. All right, there it is. Wipe this oil off. Okay. Looks good and uniform. All of our countersinks will be the same depth. All right, very nice. Well, from here we can flip it over. We need to chamfer the bottom side of the holes. And then we'll line up again, center up, and we'll put our two uh, dial pins in there, drill and ream it for our dial pins. All right, so we got the plate flipped over, got it deburred, and I've already recentered it, and we're back on our three inch center. We are exactly in the center this way. So we're right in the middle, three inches, and then three inches off the center line there. And what we're going to do is drill and ream two three-eighths holes for our hardened pins to press into, hopefully. I'm going to use a, a three-eighths reamer, and hopefully that'll, that'll give that pin a, uh, a very, very light press fit. We'll try the first one and see if, how it feels, and if it's too loose, then I'll go down to a smaller reamer on this other side. So let's go ahead and get it done. I'm going to spot it. Just spotting in the location there. And then I'm going to use a 20, let me see, there's a 23 60 force drill bit. That'll drill it about 15 thousandths undersize for our reamer. I'm going to come down here and just touch the divot. I'm going to zero out the quill up here. Then we'll go down 3 eighths of an inch, maybe an extra 10 thou for clearance. I already measured, I got the pins in the uh, fixture plate all the way and I measured them and all we need is about 340,000 so I don't want to go too deep. Uh, it's about 385 deep. Just want to break that corner there. Now I'll go with my reamer. Let's go for it. All right, that, that was it. Let me uh, get the hole cleaned out and we'll check the pin. I don't have my air on, so I'm using my CRC degreaser here to just kind of blast it out with the cleaner. All 
All right, it feels like that's going to be right. I think it will be. So let me go ahead. Let me go ahead and find my little hammer, and we'll tap this guy home. Perfect. That was a good fit right there. That, that should hold that in there so whenever I do take this thing off, I don't have to worry about it pulling out of there. All right, let's go ahead and do one more. Perfect. All right. Okay. This is now done. So let's go check it on the fixture plate, see how it fits. All right. There's our mounting plate. I really like the way that look, that look is from the shaper. I just really like it. It's nice and smooth. And I'll point this out. Unfortunately, I keep forgetting to pick up the bolts that I need. So hopefully tomorrow I will remember to get the, the, the socket bolts for it. But let's go ahead and see if it'll go home. Looks like it's going to be a close fit. It's a precision fit. Definitely. So I'm going to have to give it some taps. Look at that. Perfect. Nice. And it looks just like it was made for it. That looks good. Man, I wish I had them bolts. I, I was going to stop and pick them things up today, and I just I got sidetracked with some other things that was going on at the moment, and then I came home and <laughs> realized I didn't stop and get them. But I'll just uh, I'll leave it right here, and uh, we'll pick it up tomorrow, right right where we left off, and we'll get it bolted in. But that looks good. So everything's lining up just like it should. Very cool. All right, so it's the next day. I finally got the bolts that I need to get this thing bolted in. So that's really all we got left to do for to finish off this video here. I'm gonna put a dab of this new Blue Molly Never Sees that I recently picked up. Robin Renzetti has shown this stuff on his uh, his Instagram, and he, he prefers this Blue Molly for the precision fit applications. So I picked up a can to, to try it out for some different things around here. So I'm going to put just a dab on these, uh, on these threads right there because, I mean, once this goes in there, there's really no reason for, to have to take this thing off. We may have to... Uh, we may end up taking it off just to um, clean the, the chips out and everything on the inside once we're through with the rest of the machining there. So let's go ahead and see if they fit. We'll go ahead and dry run them first. That one's sticking a little bit right there. This one's sticking just a touch. You got those two right there that are rubbing just a little bit. So I'm not going to use a lot of this this uh, blue molly. I just want a dab of it. Just a little dab. Dab will do you, like micro says. Now, I didn't show this uh, yesterday. I went ahead and I pulled this plate back off, and I put a dab of this also on the two dowel pins underneath there.
These two right here got just a little bit of, just touching a little bit on the thread of that bolt, but it's going in there just like it, just like it was designed to. All right, there we go. So there's that one, that one. Okay, all right, there we go. So now we have our base plate mounted, and I think that is going to create a very nice solid foundation for this fixture plate. There you have it. So with it being square, you should be able to drop it in the vise either, either way that you want to. Everything's going to kind of even out itself. Okay. It turned out good. I like it. All right, well, that's going to be it for this, for this video. And once we come back and uh, start, start on this again on the next series, what we're going to do is start our drilled and tapped holes on the front side. So as I had mentioned before, that is going to be two inch centers for our, we're going to do half 13 hole downs uh, or half, ter half 13 holes for our hole downs. I'm also going to incorporate some, uh, smaller drilled and tapped holes for I think quarter inch hardware as well. I've got a small kit that I had uh, that I had gotten for small small hold downs. So I'm going to put a few small tapped holes and I also want to be able to have it to where I can drill it and ream it for some pins on the outside too. So once we have this in the vise, I can take say a long piece of flat bar or some kind of work piece like that and just slide it up against the pins and I know that it's square and, uh, and then use the hold downs. So we're going to, that's going to be some more, but, um, actually I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. I'm not going to be drilling and tapping on the next video. Next one is going to be surfacing this. All right. So we're going to go back to the shaper, put it in the shaper vise there, and we're going to surface the top of this so that it's parallel with the bottom. Nice clean surface there. We're also going to cut our sides in and, and get this thing nice and square, just like we did our mounting plate there for the bottom. Okay. So I apologize for kind of jumping ahead, but next one's going to be the shaper. All right, some more of our finishing on our cast iron.